Beautiful morning here at the homestead. I've got dahlias in my bed. I've got beets in my bed. In fact, I have too many beets. So in today's video, I'm gonna try to do something I've seen all over the internet, which is make homemade beet ravioli. We've had a ton of rain here in San Diego. You can see it all over. In fact, it was raining like 10 minutes ago, but I'm just gonna take some beets out. Now these are multi-sown beets. What that means is I put a bunch of beets in and I didn't thin them out at all and it's a good time to do so. So there we go. Decent size on this beet. I don't even know how many I need. I'll probably pull out maybe just the larger ones and let these smaller ones grow. That's the nice part about a multi-sew method is I can pull this one out and this is a nice large one, see? And yeah, I took up one of the small guys with it, but the rest of these I'll just recover. And you can take a look and see, they'll size up on their own. Actually, I kind of want this guy right here too. I need to remember how many beets I need. Should be good. We'll rebury these guys. And maybe I'll take one golden beet just for fun. Maybe mix in a little flare. It's one of my favorites. Let me hunt down one of the big boys. This guy's decent. Got my beets. Let's wash these guys off. But I also need some mint because the filling calls for, I think it's a blend of ricotta cheese, mint, and goat cheese. This mint bed has been cut back three times and it just wants to keep on coming up. Now I will say eventually, there's gonna be such root mass in here, you're gonna to have to reset it, but it's pretty solid, pretty solid bed, I have to say. It's been doing well for us. All right, that's probably enough. Let's go to prep. All I gotta do here is just chop off the top. In this instance, you can save these beet greens. I don't really care about them right now, I'll give them to the hens. Cut off the tail, and that's it. With mint, I'm just going to strip it from the stem with my fingers. Easiest way to deal with it. Sounds like Gucci's laying an egg. That's an egg song if I ever heard one right there. And then mint, easiest way is just run your fingers down the opposite way and then I just pinch off the top, especially with these long sprigs. She's having a hard time today <laughs> with that egg. All right, this is probably enough mint. And the one thing I didn't mention is the sauce calls for a little bit of lemon. Now I don't have any lemons in the citrus hedge right now, but what I do have are overripe limes, which honestly, it's close enough. So I'm gonna go ahead, give you a little cross section here. It's gonna be good. It will have a little bit more of a lime flavor than I might've liked, but it's all good. That's what I've got on the, on the property. Okay, I've got my ingredients. It's time to enter the kitchen. Let's go figure out how to turn this into ravioli. The first step in beet ravioli is roasting the beets. So I didn't do too much of a clean here. I just kind of rinsed off any of the debris and I'm not gonna peel it because what I'm doing now is busting out trusted since 1947 Reynolds wrap, not sponsored, just the only thing that you ever need for aluminum foil. A while ago, I actually watched the How It's Made on Reynolds wrap and it was actually really fascinating. So I highly recommend you check that out if you're a nerd and wanna see how this stuff is made. But I'm just gonna wrap it up and I'm gonna throw it in the oven at 400 Fahrenheit. We will put the Celsius conversion on the screen for you guys. I'm gonna roast for about an hour because I need to puree this into the overall dough mixture to get that beautiful color and a little bit of that flavor. In for an hour, then it's time to get our dough going. Oh, you're starting to see that, that beet sugar come out. Ooh, look at that steam. Look at that steam. Okay, so what should happen here, I should be able to just kind of peel off the skin of the beet. Yeah, totally, there you go. That's exactly what I was trying to do. Look at that golden, well, it's not golden, but that sort of shiny appearance. Looks absolutely delicious. So there we go. Now what we need to do is we need to food process this. So the first part is pureeing the beets, and then we'll build the rest of the pasta mixture, and then we'll also build the filling. The food processor, I used to not use this very much in the kitchen, but lately it's really become a staple. So I've been making more involved recipes like this that actually require you to chop things up and put them into mixtures instead of just putting raw ingredients on a plate and cooking them. So here we go. I'm gonna go with the chop here. Pure the, puree the beets until smooth, but I need some eggs. So let's go outside, see what the hens have laid for us today. I've got some eggs here but why not use the freshest that I've got? Is butter in here? Butter's probably, yep, there's butter's booty. All right, butter, I need to take two eggs. Let me just get a little, let's see what's going on. 
Holy! Okay, let's. <laughs> How many are there? Two, three, four. Okay, I guess I didn't harvest yesterday. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my god! <laughs> I got a dozen. I got a dozen. Okay, well I only need two, so let me take these two. Butter's like, all right, bro. I guess I'll leave. We'll leave those there for now. We'll come back for them. I need ways to use eggs, guys. I've been trying to give him to Jacques so he grows up to a strong boy, but even he can't eat enough. So what I'm supposed to do here is pop these eggs in, which is easy, but then I'm supposed to also add the flour and the salt, and it's three and a half cups, so I don't have enough space in the processor. So I guess my goal here is to get as smooth a mixture of the beets and eggs as I can. Then I'll move it over to the KitchenAid and we'll do the dough in the big mixing bowl. Take a look. It's about as good as I think I'm gonna get here. So here's what I'll do. I will bring out the KitchenAid and I need three and a half cups of flour. I'm just gonna use all purpose flour in this case. And I need a teaspoon of salt. We are not doing a weight based measurement on this. We're just doing a, a volumetric one. I'm actually preferable to weight based because I've been baking a lot lately as I mentioned, but whatever. We'll just go ahead and do it this way. We'll see how it goes. And then I'm gonna need a quarter cup measure. Right here, we'll put that in. This might actually be a lot of ravioli. Might need to get the team on, on a free lunch here. I need a tablespoon, a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna go dough hook. So this guy right here, and then I'm going to pour in my beet and egg mixture here. It's starting to look almost like a berries and cream cheese type of dish, isn't it? This is gonna be a very thick dough, I feel like. What's interesting about this recipe is like, that's a lot of flour to use into a little bit of eggs. When I'm used to making egg pasta, I think I do 385 grams of flour into like 200 grams of eggs. So you, you can see the ratio is a little different there. So we'll see, we'll see if this kind of toughens up. Okay, here we go. The only mod I really made was just adding that last yolk, which I think really helped the dough form up. It's just a little bit too dry. Let's take a look at the dough. That is bright, bright purple, and it is very, very tough. Uh, so what I need to do, I think, is I do probably need to knead this just a tad bit more. We'll try kneading it. I'm certainly not the best kneader here, but I think you just wanna go here and come around, just trying to get it a little bit more incorporated, nice smooth texture. And then it's kind of like making any egg-based pasta. You gotta let it sit a little bit, not for any like fermentation purposes, but just to let that dough get some structure so you can run it through. We're gonna run it back through the KitchenAid, roll it into sheets, and I've got this handy little stamp here from Marcado, and we're gonna have these big old raviolis that we're gonna be able to stamp. So. Here we go. I'd say that looks pretty good. Feels like it could be a little bit more incorporated, honestly, but it's about as good as I feel like I can get it right now. So, in we go. This goes in the fridge for a couple hours. We're gonna come back and we're gonna make the filling and we're also gonna make a brown butter sauce to drizzle on top. Our dough is almost done chilling. It's been an hour or two. Uh, I need to make the filling though. So, the thing is, I don't have the goat cheese. All I have is ricotta cheese, which to me is a delicious cheese. I, I love it. In with the ricotta, calls for a cup and then three quarters of a cup of goat cheese. So I'm just gonna, I guess, use all ricotta all the time and we'll just hope that it's enough. You gotta give it that taste. I mean, come on, you gotta give that ricotta that taste. See how it tastes. It's just fantastic. I mean, it's just a really good cheese. So in this goes in the bowl, this is a pound. So I think we're gonna be all right. But I've got my fresh mint and my fresh parsley. I need to add a dash of salt in here. It's about a quarter of a teaspoon. So we'll throw a little bit of that in. I actually think I'm gonna put a little more cause it just feels right. I'm gonna do a couple cracks of pepper in here. Might've been too much. And then I just need apparently about a tablespoon each of the mint and the parsley feels a little light to me for some reason. Maybe I want a little bit more of a, a flavorful mix. So we'll see. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that and what I'm actually gonna do is take sprigs of parsley out. This I don't have yet started in the garden. I just moved the herb bed as you remember with Jacques. So we had to restart a couple things that didn't make it and the parsley is one that didn't make it but that's starting in the greenhouse right now. 
we're gonna be in a really good spot pretty soon. To me, this feels like an appropriate amount of herbs. Hopefully I'm not over spicing myself here, but I guess I'll have to live with that if it happens. But I really wanna get this nice and fine because I kinda want this really well incorporated into this ricotta mixture. I love how I'm talking about this to you guys. Like I know what I'm talking about. I've made ravioli once and I don't even remember what I put in the filling. But I have to say this parsley and mint combo, the scent that's coming off of the cutting board right now is truly on a different level. It really, really smells good. In fact, Ian, why don't you give this a little quick whiff? See what you think. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a happy boy behind the camera right now. It smells really good. So in we go, get a spoon, try to mix this up. I really wanna make sure, cause I use that flaky salt. I really wanna make sure I get that salt in here. I think you gotta give the mixture a taste test, right? Let's see what we got. That's really tasty. That's really nice. And you know what? I might add just a little bit of this Turkish oregano. Jacques got this for me for Christmas or for my birthday, I forgot which one, but either way, I appreciated it. He got me a bunch of spices. So in we go. And I think it's time now to take out our dough and see what we're working with. Okay, here we go, nice and firm. And honestly, I don't know about you guys, but to me, this feels like it took on a darker texture. <laughs> so what I need to do now is I need to clean off this board because I need to bust out my rolling attachment. All right, I've got my little KitchenAid roller, which I honestly love. It's a great, it's honestly a great tool. It just kind of screws into the top here. And it's got these different widths and you kind of roll your sheets out in thinner and thinner sheets as you go. So the way to do this, and I remember this from my egg pasta days, uh, let me get some flour real quick. So, okay, so what we've got here is a floured surface, right? This is looking a little, a little sticky for some reason, so I'm gonna get that. And then what I wanna do is, I wanna cut this into quarters. We'll see a nice cross section here, look at that. Not bad, right? Not bad at all. And what I need to do is I need to get to sheets, okay? So the way I've done the egg pasta in the past is you've got your quarter, and what you wanna do is kinda of get it into a, a shape that you could conceivably run through the first pass. So this looks pretty good to me and just turn it on. So I'm on the one setting here and I'm just going to kind of spread it out and run it through. So what's gonna do is it's gonna get it out to this width and I really need uniformity here because of course I'm making ravioli, right? So I need one sheet and then I need another sheet on top. All you're seeing with this sort of speckled or this striated look is just different pieces of flour not being fully incorporated, but that's okay because I'm pretty sure once that cooks, it'll be good. And honestly, the, the bottom side looks really nice. Okay, I actually just had an idea that I don't think I need to roll two sheets. I think what I can do is fold one over the other. So fold this and then make all my, my scoops. So as long as I know what that line is, which I believe I'm just gonna make a little pinch right there. I'll put my dollops in and I'll fold it over and I'll be good to go. So what I need to do, these are gonna be big raviolis. I need to go one, two, three. So I wanna do a dollop like in the middle like that, I'm thinking. So that'll be that one, right? Let's see what happens here. See what happens. I don't think I can squeeze another one in over there. So I'm just not going to. The moment of truth, we'll do the, the covering here. I should see the bumps. <clears throat> I mean, did that, did that stamp it out? Oh shoot, I think it did, okay. Okay, we're in business, baby. Okay, so we'll do the lift. And would you look at that? We've got some beautiful raviolis. Look at this. I mean, come on, that looks pretty good, honestly. Okay, let me get a wire rack or something. So I'll store these ones here, and honestly, I have a lot more of these to make. So I'll catch you guys in a bit. So I've got my last sheet here. This is all the ends of the other sheets. But what I've realized is I've run out of the ricotta filling. So what I'm gonna do is consolidate all of the ricotta into one giant ravioli. <laughs> we're gonna see how that cooks, and we're gonna see how that tastes. I forgot, you can't fold it right to the cheese edge. You gotta give it a little actual natural dough edge. So there's the cheese edge, we're gonna go to there. Okay, so I've got my structure. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut 
Okay, so now I really, this one, if this one gets, <laughs> explodes in the, <laughs> in the pod, it's not really gonna be good. So I'm gonna do the old, old raviolo clamp. Be honest, this looks like it's gonna be good as hell. I do have some left. Now, what am I gonna do with this? I'm actually going to consolidate all of this. And later on, not on, on cam, I'm gonna make some fettuccine noodles with this. I have one of these fettuccine slicing attachments. Good way to preserve this. I just ran out of filling. Would have had a lot more ravioli, but that's fine. We'll leave that out for now. It's time to actually cook. Okay, so I need to fill this up. And because it's fresh pasta dough, I think I'm gonna salt the water relatively heavily. That's at least what I've done with egg pasta in the past. In we go. Let's get this guy cooking. I'm gonna grab some salt. Probably a sin to use iodized salt. Let's mix this up. We do want to dissolve it. So it's five to seven minutes on the ravioli. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start making the brown butter sauce, which I've never done. I don't really know how to do it, but I've got Kerrygold, I've got my pure Irish butter, and I'm gonna use all of it. I think I just need lemon juice, which I don't have, but I do have those limes that I had from outside. So that's fine, I'm gonna grab a saucepan. How much lemon juice do I need here? How do you do brown butter? What do I need to do? Melt it until it brown bits start to form, okay. We're learning on the fly here because that's how we do everything at Epic Gardening. It's more fun to show you guys the mistakes than to present it as this perfect chef or gardener, which we are not. We just simply aren't. That's not how we roll. All right, so I'm gonna take all this Kerrygold butter. Won't go to waste because I'm actually going to be making that beet fettuccine like I mentioned. So we're gonna try to brown that. And then I need three and a half tablespoons of this lime juice here. So they are not lemons and they don't taste like lemons. It definitely still tastes like lime juice, but a little bit more of that lime acidity is gone. And some of that, a little bit of that lemony kind of sweetness whew, is still there. Let's see. Honestly, it's hard to tell the difference. It still is limey, but it's not as much as you might think. All right, I think I have my brown butter. You guys tell me. I don't know, it's been on here for like a lot, a lot of time, and it's bubbling like crazy. So <laughs> I don't know, but I'm gonna reserve it. I'm gonna take it off and put it to the side. It's time to go in with my ravioli. In we go. You probably have to get the air out because it'll expand in there or something, and then you'll be in a, in a tough spot. Look at that one floating, mistake. Absolute mistake, absolute novice. I'll let this go. What I need to do now is I need to take my lemon juice, mix it in with my, my sauce there, which is just pure butter, and we'll mix that around. Now, what I'm really curious is how does this taste if it's lemon and, and butter? What does that sauce taste like? That's actually really good. Oh my God, that's salty. Okay, it's been about seven minutes here. Thankfully, none of them split. They're all looking kind of weird. Oh, I don't even know if I should have done it that way, but I did. We'll let those drain, but we're not done because we gotta cook the toaster strudel. Okay, I am going to try some and see what I've created. Not the best shape in the world, is it? I think the filling technique needs a little bit of work. We're gonna get just a little bit of sauce here, of our lemony, and we're gonna hit it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. All right, my friends. Homemade beet ravioli with a ricotta parsley mint filling, a brown butter sauce, and some Parmesan cheese. Let's see how this tastes. First of all, let's get that cross section of the filling. Let's take a look. What do we got? It's in there. <laughs> it's a little light, but it's in there. That's pretty good. I mean, that's pretty good. You get the mint for sure. I think without the butter sauce, it wouldn't wouldn't have been as enticing. I feel like, Ian, I feel like you have to try this. Right, here we go. Okay, smells good. The cheese on top is a nice touch. Oh, this one. Is it full? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's full. Mm -hmm. That's full. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's not bad. Not bad at all. The parsley. Mm -hmm. Nice. The parsley comes nice through. Touch. Uh -huh. None of the beet. That's actually a good point. There is no beet flavor. All right, it's time to take the strudel out. We flipped it a couple times just to make sure it was okay. So I'm gonna go one corner, go to the other corner here. Nope, nope, that's not gonna do it. I ripped it. I ruined the strudel, guys. That was the smarter way. Mm. 
Oh no. Oh no! The strudel! No! It's beyond repair. God. You know what? There's only one way to heal this and to cover it up. Oh! That was too much. <laughs> this is just getting bad, dude. This is getting bad. I'm gonna bring this out to the team and see what they think. <laughs> All right. Daddy's got a strudel for you, Charlie. This is one of the le least appetizing things I've ever served. Get in on the strudel. Interesting first cut. Oh yeah, I see, you know what you did? You made it look a little bit better. Ja uh, Paul? That looks delicious. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you think so. I mean, last time you made fun of me for taking too big of a bite. Well, trust me, I, that's why, why do you think I made, why do you think I made a strudel sized ravioli? That's no joke. Is it good? That's delicious. Yeah? Yeah. Ravioli yeah. That's not bad. You could get me to eat vegetables if that's what they always do. You work here and you don't eat veggies? <laughs> Paul, come on now. Team approved, taste good, aesthetics bad. Okay, I can't seem to cook without decimating the kitchen. I mean, look at this. <laughs> it just made one dish. I just made one dish. I need help, guys. I need help. But I have to say, the ravioli, the beet ravioli from scratch, custom filling, honestly good. Honestly, very delicious, but like anything I seem to cook, not pretty, not aesthetic. So if you have tips, let me know. Let me know what we should cook next. Good luck in the garden. I've got some beet spaghetti to finish cooking and I'll see you soon.